Today on Real Guys, we're making paddle and rod tethers. So what you're saying is you're going to turn this pile of random stuff into a rod and paddle tether? Yep. We've got some paracord. We've got some weed eater string. We've got a carabiner that I printed on my 3D printer, a couple parts from the hardware store, and some shrink wrap tubing. I'm telling you, it's going to work. What is a paddle tether, you ask? Well, this. This is a paddle tether. I printed this ring on my printer to slip around my paddle shaft. <laughs> shaft. It's got this springy part in the middle. And the other end has a carabiner that I clipped to my seat. It's supposed to keep expensive stuff from jumping out of the kayak into the lake. So what we have to do is get this paracord to retain a curly Q shape. And right now it's flexible and it won't do that. So what I have to do is I have to remove the inner strands of this paracord and then push this weed whacker line in the, the sheath of this paracord, then wrap it around something round, then heat it up to make it retain its shape. Let's start with the details of what we are using. This is standard weed whacker line, or as the guy that designed the package calls it, shaped trimmer line. I used what was at the store, which happened to be 0 0.095 in diameter. I also shopped on Amazon, and I bought some cheap paracord. This is 250 pound capacity, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to remove the guts out of it, and that's what makes it strong. And finally, we get to the wooden dowel. The skinnier the wooden dowel, the tighter the coils. I chose this one, which is 0.375 inches in diameter, which of course is 3 eighths of an inch. But for you Canadian viewers who don't use freedom inches, it's 12, I don't know, beaver teeth in diameter. But you have it easy. All you have to do is get on your dog sled and mush on over to the tractor supply and say, hey, I need a wooden dowel and it's got to be 12 beaver meters in width. We poor Americans, we had to do math and convert a fraction. And speaking of math, that brings us back to this coil. This one started out as about 72 inches long before I got it all coiled up. And now it's about four and a half inches long. So there's probably some math that'll let you know how short it ends up being from how long it was, but after that conversion of the fraction, I'm kind of math exhausted at this point. All right, so I've measured out about 72 inches of the paracord. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove the inside guts of this paracord and replace it with the trimmer line. And all you have to do is just peel it out. After you get it so far, it'll start to come all by itself without having to kind of inchworm it down, and there it is. Now, I saw videos where some people left one strand of this stuff inside their paracord. Well, I could make it work, so good luck to you, and God bless you if you can do it, but I just got rid of all that and replaced it with the trimmer cord. But before we do that, we're going to melt the end of this so it doesn't fall apart as they're putting the cord in. And just for good measure, get the other side too. All right, now comes the easy part. You don't need to measure this stuff to length. Just pull it out, and when it gets done feeding through there, you've got the right amount. And it starts out kind of easy, but then you have to kind of inchworm it in. And I'll show you what I mean by inchworming it. And this is what I mean by inchworming it. You gotta just kind of Squish a bunch up onto there and pull it through. Squish it up and pull it through. Squish it up and pull it through. Just takes a few minutes. All right, now I've got the weed whacker line all the way through the inside of this paracord. You see it's sticking out this side and sticking out that side. Now I grab that 3 8 rod and I drill the hole in it that's big enough for both the paracord and the weed whacker line to go through. And there's a trick to getting this to go into that hole. It took me a lot of swearing to figure it out, but I actually figured it out. So what you do is you want to stick the weed whacker line a little bit inside 
So all you have to do is fit the paracord through the hole. And then just kind of screw it around back and forth. And you should be able to get it both in there at the same time. Uh, I might have to start swearing again. There it goes. So now, you only want to stick it out a little way and then start twisting it like this. And even though I've got plenty of time on my hands because I'm on COVID-19 lockdown, there's a quicker way. This is why I chose the 3 8 inch rod, because you can do this. Stick it in your drill. Tighten it down. And then just start turning. And every once in a while, stop and squish it back. Oops. Right about there I stop. Now I've got to get this one through there too. So let me get that one put through the hole and I'll come right back. So after a little bit of a battle, I have it sticking out this side. And I've got it sticking through a hole in the middle of the dowel and coming out this side. This side I have a little bit more sticking out and I'll show you why. So the more you have sticking out past the end of your roll, the more space you have to put your fastener on. So I have one side tight and one side long. This was my first try, so I make some adjustments on my shrink wrap. All right, we need to drop it into boiling water. Make sure your dowel fits in the pan before you drop it in. How long? Well, some videos said 10 minutes, but I don't want to hoard minutes, so I'm doing it in nine. And to continue with the metric conversion, that's like a tenth of an hour, so that's like, what, six Canadian minutes? I don't know. All right. So now we've been boiling this in the pan for, for nine minutes. We're going to go ahead and get it out, and I'll show you how, how to unwrap it. Ah, son of a... Oh, come on. After you get done boiling it for nine minutes, ten minutes if you're an overachiever, six minutes if you're Canadian, you got to put it in cold water to set it into that coiled shape before you take it off of the dowel. To get it off of there, I just kind of get it some slack. Pull the other side th through. And you should be able to just kind of unscrew it off of the dowel. All right, now when it's like this, it's actually not a tight coil. It's actually pretty loose. It doesn't really matter so much when it's a tight coil like this, where it's, I should say, a skinny coil like this. But if it was wrapped around a wider dowel, you want to make this a stronger pull on the spring. So what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it onto itself. And you do that by sticking it back in your drill. And I'm just going to reverse it onto itself. There it is, and it's a tighter coil. All right, so some guys get all excited about getting these ends on. They're doing all sorts of loops and whatever. I'm just using wire terminals. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting the, the weed whacker line, that orange stuff, up into the wire terminal where I can see it coming out the end. But I want to make sure I tuck all this other stuff in there. And I've got a piece of shrink tubing ready to suck down on top of the paracord so it'll stay in place without falling apart. So all I'm doing is getting everything kind of up in there. Grab my terminal crimp crimpers. And I'm just crimping it down on that trimmer line. Now, 
I can push my shrink wrap up over the end here. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna shrink down and hold everything in place, including that paracord. And I learned my lesson. I'm not gonna use my lighter, I'm gonna just use my heat gun. Put it on. Get this pill pulled back where it belongs. Get this shoved up into the piece. Squeeze it down. So it's got a nice firm grab. Get my shrink tubing put back in place right here. Doesn't need to go all the way up. And now I'm gonna melt it in place. And for the side that's gonna go with the carabiner, I use a carabiner because it wraps around the fishing pole pretty easily. I actually put one of these little rings on. Then this can actually just get hooked right inside the carabiner. And this goes around your fishing rod. Then the other end, it's your choice. Whatever you're hooking this to to keep your rod from falling out of your boat will determine what kind of fastener you use. And some people are just using small S beaners that actually go on to a part of their milk crate. Why do you need these? I prepared a chart to explain it. The chance of equipment staying in your kayak is inversely proportional to the cost. As you can see, the more money it costs, the less chance it stays in the kayak when you get tippy. And that's the last of the math for this video. And here's the finished product. This is the kayak paddle leash. You know, the one that slides over the shaft. <laughs> shaft. It can slide back and forth over the middle of the paddle, and even if I drop it, it isn't going to end up at the bottom of the lake. And this is how I connect the retainer, or leash, to a fishing rod. The plastic carabiner doesn't hurt the pole, and whether it is latched to a milk crate or clipped into another item, it won't end up sinking into Davy Jones' locker. Please subscribe. I really need the attention. <laughs> Shaft.